Good morning, church. It's Tuesday morning. Take your Bibles and go to John chapter number 16 as we complete uh, Jesus' uh, teachings as he has been in the upper room. Now they're on their way to Gethsemane and they're almost to the Garden of Gethsemane. We're going to see the high priestly prayer in chapter 17. But his final instruction to the disciples is again concerning, I've told you about these things. I know your sorrow is, your sorrow level is way up. I've given you these things so that you'll know that you don't need to worry about anything, that your sorrow needs to be turned into joy. Now, as they're walking along to the Garden of Gethsemane, here's what Jesus says to them in verse 16. And again, this is just reaffirming some things he's already taught them, but it is certainly good to know that he was reassuring his disciples because their hearts were deeply distressed and our hearts in these days and time are deeply distressed as well verse 16 it says a little while and you will not see me again a little while and you will see me because i go to the father then some of the disciples among him said what is it that he's saying to us what, what does he mean here a little while we're not going to see him then we'll be able to see him again what what's all this about and now uh, jesus knew in verse 19 that they desired to ask him these things and so he said to them are you inquiring among yourselves about what i just said a little while and you'll not see me and again a little while you'll see me Merciful, assuredly i say unto you that you will weep and lament but the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful but your sorrow is going to be turned into joy a woman when she is in labor has sorrow because her hour has come, but as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that the human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no, and your joy no one will take from you. And in that day, you will ask me nothing, most assuredly, I say to you, you, whatever you ask my father, ask the Father in my name, I will give it to you. Until now, you've not asked anything in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Now, what Jesus is doing, is he says, guys, I know you're upset. And I know you want to ask me some questions about what, it, what, it, what I mean about it. I'm going to go away and I'll be back. Now, that has two connotations. Number one. Jesus is going to go into the grave for three days. He would return. But also, he keeps talking about going away for a kingdom, and that is after his death, burial, and resurrection, he's going to go away to the Father for a period of time, but then he's going to send the Holy Spirit, and eventually he will return. He said, now listen, the world's glad that I'm going to go away. They're going to rejoice when they kill me. They're going to be so excited. They're going to think... They've done God a favor when they put me in that grave. They think they have won. He says, but their joy will be brief because then their joy is going to be turned into sorrow. You for a little while will sorrow, but then your joy is going to be made full when I come back. When the resurrection is reality, they're going to know that Jesus has done everything to provide for their salvation. And they will rejoice in that. Now, he goes ahead and says in verse number uh, 25 and following, These things I have spoken to you in a figurative language, but the time comes when I will no longer speak to you in figurative languages. But I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I, will do, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and I believe that I have come forth from God. I came forth from the Father. I came into the world. Again, I leave the world, and I go back to the Father. Then the disciples said, now we get it. He's speaking plainly. He's going to go back to the Father. He came from heaven. He came to this earth. He's accomplished his mission. He's going back to the Father, but he's coming back. And so he said, we, we get that. Okay, we, we understand that. And so... He keeps telling them, just trust me, just trust me. Then he says in verse number 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome 
the world. And so what Jesus is doing for these uh, disciples, he's saying to them, guys, I'm trusting in you that you're going to be able to establish a foundation for my kingdom. I'm the chief cornerstone. I'm going to provide everything that's necessary for your salvation. But through you, I'm going to build my church. Now, the world's going to hate you. Tribulation's going to come. They're going to persecute you. And many of you are going to die for my name's sake. Right now, however, you're sorrowful. Very soon, when I rise again and I go to the Father, you're going to be glad. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. And you're going to be able to do the things that... I want you to do. Here's two, you, you've not prayed in, in my, my name. You just prayed to the Father. But from now on, you just ask my Father in, the, in my name, in Jesus' name, for the things that you're going to need and the Father's going to give them. Now, I know people who take that verse and, and basically take it out of its context. It was made to those disciples who were sorrow, sorrowing at that moment that when they ask something, in the name of Jesus, they were asking for Jesus' sake, that Jesus might be glorified on the earth. Those are the things that the Father's going to do through those apostles, and he did. It doesn't mean I can just tack on to a prayer, uh, God, I need a Cadillac. In the name of Jesus, give me the, this Cadillac. In the name of Jesus, give me this woman. In the name of Jesus, give me this, this home. Uh, we can't do that. That's asking in our name. That's for our desire. But... God was comforting these disciples, preparing them for that moment when they would be separated from Jesus for a short period of time, but then they would be filled with his Holy Spirit, able to accomplish his work. The next time we'll get into the high priestly prayer, it is a jewel as we get to look behind the curtain into the Holy of Holies and see how the Father and the Son relate to one another, how Jesus speaks so boldly directly to the Father. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you that in this world, even though we may have tribulation and trouble, there may be trials that come upon us. We have your Holy Spirit. We are never alone. We never have to, to come up with the answer to our problems on our own. We always have your Spirit to guide us as a good shepherd. We always have your Word that we can look to for counsel. We always have your Spirit to give us comfort and give us peace that our joy may be full. As we go forth today, may we go forth with holy boldness, knowing that we're never alone in this world, because Jesus has already overcome this world. In his holy name we pray. Amen.